Hey, what's up guys? Matt here again. And today what we're gonna do is put together a little video for you guys on rook piercing aftercare. So the first thing we're gonna talk about with your rook is your rook takes about two to three months to heal, all right? So two to three months, um, just like all piercings, don't touch it, don't play with it. Definitely don't rotate it and spin it. None of that fun stuff, okay? So um, it's not like when you go and get your ear pierced, you know, at the mall or something like that and they tell you to spin and rotate the jewelry. It's the exact opposite, all right, guys? So no touching, hands off, okay? The next thing is really important is try not to sleep on that side. So do your best to sleep on the other side. You know, I know it's tricky. There are gonna be some nights when you wake up sleeping on top of it, but really important, flip over, sleep on that other side, okay? eight hours of pressure all night long. Um, it's gonna cause a lot of trauma, a lot of unnecessary trauma to that piercing. It's just gonna make it a lot harder for you to heal. No bumping, no knocking, no rotating it, no spinning it, no sleeping on it, all right guys? Um, so important. Now next, uh, try and avoid all public bodies of water. So um, public bodies of water being oceans, lakes, pools, jacuzzis, um, anything of that nature, all right? You know, your own bath, your own showers, that kind of stuff, of course, is totally fine. Um, you're just not using those public bodies of water, uh, mostly from the neck up, okay? So if you're going to jacuzzi, waist down, probably not a big deal. Just don't get that water on your ear, your brand new piercing. And then next thing we'll talk about is really important is no hydrogen peroxide, no alcohol, no neosporin, no Bactine, uh, none of that fun stuff on there. All of that is way too harsh. It just does a lot more damage than good. Um, it's not really necessary. Uh, so try and avoid any of those bottle products. Um, you know, I couldn't tell how many times people come in the shop and be like, oh, I use Neosporin. Um, Neosporin works really good for me. But you know, if you read on a bottle or a tube of Neosporin, it says not for puncture wounds. Your body piercing is definitely a puncture wound, okay? So nothing, all right? None of that fun stuff. Now, maybe in the shower, if you want to, you can lightly take like an antibacterial soap or an antimicrobial soap, set it up into your hands and lightly wash the top or the outside of your piercing. Now just know that is for the outside of the piercing, not the inside, okay? So lightly wash it, you know, just kind of keeps it free of earwax and dirt, buildup, debris, dead skin cells, all that other stuff. And, uh, and then rinse it off of the water really, really well, being really careful not to get that soap into the piercing itself, okay? Now, how do I actually clean the piercing, you ask? Okay, well, there is really only one acceptable way to do that, and that is with saltwater soaks, okay? So you wanna do a saltwater soak or a sea salt soak once or twice a day. Now, the recommended time is seven to 15 minutes once or twice a day, okay? Now, how do you go about that? Really easy, go to the grocery store, get a gallon of distilled water. Now, distilled water, it's gonna run you around a dollar, super cheap, super easy, any grocery store's gonna have it, it's in the drinking water aisle. Um, grab that gallon of distilled water, then shoot over to the uh, salt section in the same grocery store, and you're gonna get some non-iodized or all-natural sea salt, okay? Really easy find, also should be pretty cheap, like a dollar or so, um, really easy. Take that stuff home, those two items, and when you get home, it's four teaspoons of that salt, pour it into the gallon of distilled water, okay? Um, four teaspoons to the gallon, no more, no less, all right? You want exactly four teaspoons in that gallon of water. Shake it up, that's gonna give you a big jug to kind of keep around the house, all right? Now that is your cleaning solution. That is the only thing you're gonna use to clean this piercing, okay? Now, once, maybe twice a day if you got time, you're gonna take a coffee cup or a shot glass, all right? Always make sure it's uh, glass or porcelain, never plastic or paper cups. Take those cups, fill it up with a salt water solution. Now you wanna microwave that, you wanna microwave for a few seconds. Um, a few seconds, uh, you just want it body temperature, okay? So just lukewarm, so barely, all right? Take that cup, tilt your head to the side, and dunk your ear in there, all right? And you're gonna soak it seven to 15 minutes. So seven to 15 minutes, once or twice a day. Now, one thing that's kind of tricky about the rook is it is a piercing that's kind of buried up against your head. So um, if you're not able to soak your ear, get your piercing submerged in there, the second best thing is gonna be to do a compress, all right? Now, a compress would be where you take a paper towel, um, fold it up, dunk it in that warm salt water so solution you just microwaved, and do a compress where you just kind of press it against the piercing, all right? And once again, let it soak that way for seven to 15 minutes. Now, no, uh, that compress isn't nearly as good as actually doing a salt water soak. So if you can soak your ear in that, that cup of salt water, that is hands down the best of the best ways to, to take care of this piercing. Um, but if it's not happening, obviously you gotta resort to the second best way and that would be to do a compress. 
Uh, when you're doing a compress, make sure to just use paper towels. Don't ever, ever use cotton balls or Q-tips or anything of that, that style. Um, those things tend to leave a lot of little fibers behind uh, and those can cause like little cysts and, and infections and problems, okay? So only clean paper towels. And then when you're done, just take a little bit of fresh water, wash your ear off, and that's it. You know, other than that, you know, other than your salt water soak, you're just leaving it alone and letting your body do its job. For the most part, your body knows how to heal itself. So let your body do what it already naturally knows how to do, okay guys? Leave it alone, do salt water soaks, and that is it. You know, if anything looks too weird or out of the ordinary, go shoot over and talk to your local piercer. You know, go down to the piercer who pierced you and, and let them help you, okay? Uh, usually, most piercers can fix just about any problem that's happening to your piercing, uh, but you gotta let them help you out with that. You know, hopefully, if you're doing everything correct, you know, you're leaving it alone, you're not bumping, you're not knocking it, and you're just doing those saltwater soaks, you shouldn't have any problems at all. For rook piercings, uh, the size of jewelry that I usually start you off with is a 16 gauge 5 16 okay? So in the future, if you're ever shopping around for jewelry, that's a really good size to look for. 16 gauge 5 16 should fit you no problem. Usually a 16 gauge 5 16 has a little bit of extra length on there for the swelling and healing, which I think actually looks really nice on the rooks. But once it's healed, fully healed, you know, that two to three months down the road, you could downsize to maybe a 16 gauge quarter inch. Now that's something you might want to have your piercer look at and just kind of verify that your ear could fit a 16 gauge quarter inch um, if you wanted to go with the shorter jewelry uh, but just know 16 gauge 5 16 is usually the standard so in the future if you're looking for jewelry uh, check out a 16 gauge 5 16 and it should be able to fit no problem all right guys so hopefully that's some uh, basic information that kind of helps you out to heal your your brand new rook piercing thanks for watching these videos you guys really appreciate it and uh, we'll see you guys next one